If I must starve, let it be in your arms. By Ignium 807. Chapter 9. Eskel and Lambert showed up to Kermorin three weeks earlier than usual. Vesemir was a little surprised to see Eskel ride in before the air turned truly cold, and even more surprised when Lambert followed a day later. After making sure that neither were being chased by a beast or vengeful sorcerer, he brushed the odd behavior off as the product of a difficult year. But the oddities did not stop with their early arrival. Both witchers went about their daily tasks with single-minded focus. They cooked, chopped wood, prepared potions, and trained, all with far fewer jokes or petty squabbles than Vesemir had come to expect in wintertime. Even stranger was the fact that Lambert and Eskel were cleaning. Willingly! Not the usual dusting that Kaer Morin got after so long with him an occupant. Not that at all. Every nook of the castle was scrubbed within an inch of its life. Eskel cleared the massive fireplace in the main hall as if every spot of ash were a personal offense. Lambert found a container of varnish from the gods only knew where and set about polishing every piece of wood in the castle until the place practically glowed with rich earthen tones. Vesemir tried asking about the unusual behavior, but he was rebuffed. Questions about Eskel's incessant firewood chopping weren't met without cheeky. What, you don't want to be warm this winter? Inquiries into Lambert's cleaning were turned on their hibbeth. I thought you wanted us to clean. I can stop if it bothers you that much. He had a point about the cleaning. They both did, actually, and that was precisely the problem. All of their clever answers felt rehearsed, as if they knew they would be acting strangely and had planned out responses for any concern Vesemir might raise. It irked him, but he could find nothing to complain about. Soon enough, he gave up searching for answers. They would come to him or they wouldn't. Either way, the tours got by. Now, though, Vesemir wonders if he should have pressed more. The castle gleams. The stable was immaculate. There was enough firewood stacked in a shed outside to heat the entire castle year-round for a decade, and Lambert and Eskel are restless. They scent the air constantly, sending furtive glances to the front of the castle whenever they think Vesemir isn't looking. Sparring and weapons practice is the only time of day he can get some god's damn peace, and even that is tainted by the knowledge that whatever is eating at his boys has not gone away. It has merely been me directed. Vesemir is no fool. It's clear enough that the tension in the air comes from expectation. Lambert and Eskel are waiting for something. The only question now is what? Yasker insists that he and Geralt make a final stop at the city nearest Kaer Morin before making their final ascent. I need to get some supplies, he explains. Geralt lets out a grunt of confusion. The castle is stocked. We have food and drink plenty for the winter. What do you need? Asgar shakes his head in amusement before dancing away towards the city market, a rather large bag of coin bouncing at his hip. Sometimes it's not about me, darling. It's about want. Unbeknownst to Geralt, Yasker has been planning this shopping spree for weeks. He and Geralt slept in the woods more often than usual, and when they did stay at inns, Yasker made sure to play often, play long, and spend as little as possible on ale. Not his favorite few weeks, to be sure, but he has plans. Plans that need money. He vanishes into the market stalls. Geralt stays at the inn like Yasker knew he would, because one hour of shopping takes more social interaction than Geralt usually deals with in a month. Other than Yasker, of course, but he hardly counts. Hours later, Yaskir stumbles back into their room. Night has fallen and Geralt waits for him by firelight, eyes turned suspiciously to the two large bundles and one hard case in Yaskir's arms. We are climbing a mountain tomorrow, Yaskir. We can't carry anything extravagant. Oh no, Yaskir says brightly. I'll carry it, don't you worry. They both know it's a lie. Yaskir turns away with a sigh, already thinking of all the apologies he's going to owe Roach for the extra load. Yaskir drops his bundles by the door and slides onto Geralt's lap. Heavy hands fall on his hips as he tilts Geralt's chin, forcing the witcher to meet his eyes. I'm excited, he breathes. The look on Geralt's face is a kind of smile, but a light flares to life behind his eyes that wasn't there before. How's it mine? I'll finally get to see you without all the armor. Geralt quirks an eyebrow. You see me without it every night. Yaskir shifts forward, putting more weight on Geralt as he leads it to kiss along his jaw. 
Yes, but the light during the day is so much better. Besides, I can hardly imagine you going more than a few hours without strapping it on and swinging your sword at something. There will be sparring matches. We have to stay in shape. A wicked smile settles on Yasuke's lips, which will be a delight to watch, I assure you. He worms his way out of Geralt's arms and taunts him forward, standing just out of reach until Geralt heeds himself off the floor and follows Yasuke to bed. I want to see you relaxed, love. Nothing to kill, nothing trying to kill you. Just us and your brothers, and an entire winter to do nothing but make love and drink wine. He rolls over out of Geralt's stomach, settling himself there without fear. Geralt can take his weight. Can you imagine it? Geralt can imagine it. He has imagined nothing else since autumn. The day dawns cold and bright. Eskel and Lambert rise soon after the sun, cooking breakfast with sleep must hair before setting about their daily tasks. True winter will be upon them soon, the kind that blocks mountain passes and freezes men to death if they are stupid enough to be caught in it. Eskel spends the morning polishing his already spotless weapons while Lambert organizes their food stores for the second time that week. Basimir spends it watching them both, his gaze settling on the gates as often as theirs. Their expectation is contagious, it seems, though he has no clue what they are expecting. Lunch is a quiet affair. Basimir whiles away the afternoon with a book as Lambert and Eskel spar in the courtyard. They listen to the crash of steel on steel, the grunts of exertion when one of them lands a good hit. Wind whistles through the castle, high and reedy, heralding a storm to come. And underneath it all, barely loud enough for Lambert to hear above his breath, comes the chime of a lute. Eskel drops his sword. Lambert twists aside, sending his weapon crashing into the dirt instead of his brother's head. They freeze. Enhanced hearing is stretched to its limit as both men focus on the light, sweet sound of strings being plucked a few hundred meters away. Their eyes meet, and then they're running, sprinting, nearly tripping over themselves as they bolt to the front of the castle. Lambert rounds the corner first, Eskel a beat behind him. Across the courtyard, Geralt swings off his horse and says something to the man at his side. Yaska turns as if in slow motion, and a smile splits his face as he shouts, Number Eskel! He drops his loot to the side just in time. Then his arms are full as Lambert pulls him into a bone-crushing hug, sweeping him off his feet and spinning him around like he's weightless. Yaska gasps, but his feet are back on the ground before the shot can truly really register, and he's laughing, turning his face to the sky as Lambert mumbles his name. Lambert pulls away a second later, replaced by Eskel. Yasker receives him warmly, threading his fingers through Eskel's hair as the witcher buries his face in Yasker's neck. It's good to see you, Eskel says, and a hot rush of joy runs down his spine as Yasker's arms tighten around him. It's good to see you too. They greet Geralt as well with claps on the back and easy smiles, falling into the rhythm of being together as if it hasn't been a year since they saw each other. Geralt leads Roach to the stables, and Lambert sweeps Yaskir off his feet again, carrying him like something delicate and settling him before the fire that rages in the main hall. Yaskir sheds his layers off, stiff from hiking in the cold, and reaches out for Lambert, settling in his lap with a sigh of contentment. You witches know how to hide a fortress. I was worried we'd freeze on the way up here, and no one would find our bodies until spring. I was almost concerned. Eskel says, dropping down next to him. But Geralt knows we'd kill him if the two of you showed up late. Yes, he laughs. He reaches out to brush back a lock of Eskel's hair. There's no practical need for the gesture. Eskel can only assume that Yasker does it because he wants to. And no matter how many beds they share, that knowledge will never grow old. Geralt watches them from the threshold. His bard and his brothers curled up around the fire, touching and chatting like old friends. He was worried in the dark parts of his heart that this winter together would bring out an ugly side of himself. The part that acts like a wounded animal, snarling and thrashing to keep dangerous hands away from the one bright spark in his life. In the early days, he was constantly achingly terrified that something would pull Yasker away from him. A beautiful woman in a tavern, perhaps, or some young nobleman with table manners and clear, unscarred skin. Surely the excitement of adventure would wear off eventually. Yasker would get sick of the growling and gore. His songs would be written, his fame assured, and he would melt away in the night like a mirage, leaving Geralt to walk the path alone. 
He knows better now. Knows that Yasuka sees something in Geralt. Not just the adventure, not just the road. His bard stays by his side, out of the same love and devotion that sears Geralt's veins like a potion. Sweet and painful at present. Always a hair's breadth away. Eskel and Lambert are brighter than Geralt in so many ways. They laugh easier, smile easier. The fact that they took Geralt's offer and worked up the nerve to approach Yasker on their own hints at the confidence that Geralt never possessed. Not with something like this. Monsters he can handle, and idiotic villagers too. But matters of the heart, of yearning and touch of vulnerability? Yasker taught him those. As excited as he was for the winter with his brothers, apprehension still controlled him. That old fear reared its head to whisper all the ways in which he is not enough. Not enough for Yasker, not enough for love, not enough to stand up to the fire that is his brothers. Yasker spending time with them when Geralt was elsewhere was one thing, but he thought he would fade away like so much dust when placed directly next to them. He was wrong. Yasker settles back into Lambert like he has always been there, reaches out to touch Asko without a glimmer of uncertainty. He fits here. Even with his impractical clothes and his sappy poetry, somehow Yasker fits right in amongst the witches in their hall on the mountain. The old fear shrivels up as Geralt watches them. It dies, a bloody death. His bard and his brothers are together. Geralt is whole. The low tinge of cardamom reaches Geralt's nostrils. He turns to find Vesemir behind him, watching the scene unfold. They clasp hands, as affectionate as the old man gets. Across the hall, Yaskir launches into a story involving jilted lovers and quite a bit of liquor, and Lambert drapes his arms around him in a casual gesture of intimacy. It seems I am the only one who has not met this bond of yours, Geralt. His words seem severe, but Vesemir's tone is light. A tiny bit bewildered, too. Geralt has had years to acclimate to Yasker's casual affection, and he's still shocked to see it in action. He can't imagine how Vesemir feels. You can meet him now. Vesemir hums and steps into the hall, winter boots letting out a thud on the wood floor. The three men by the fire pause the conversation. Eskel's mouth is pressed in an uncertain line, and Lambert's grip on Yasker loosens. Geralt understands their caution. Vesemir has never denied them care or even love but his expression of it comes in harsh words of criticism meant to save their lives in battle. He did not teach them vulnerability or gentleness, yet here they are seeking it in the arms of a human. If Gaskin notices the sudden attention in the air, he doesn't let on. He shrugs out of Lambert's grip and walks to meet Vesemir in the middle of the hall, walk as cocky and flamboyant as ever. You must be Vesemir, he says. You are the bard who sings those songs about us. Yes, your wings. Wings! And mouths with a flourish. At your service. Vesemir eyes him up and down like he's sizing up an opponent. Geralt knows that look. It cut him to the quick when he was young. Always criticizing, always finding room for improvement. Yasker bears it with grace. Finally, Vesemir meets Yasker's eyes and inclines his head. It's slight enough that it would be easy to miss, but Geralt sees it. And from the widening of his brother's eyes, he knows they did too. I appreciate what you have done for the good name of our work, Vesemir says, dry though it is, for Vesemir is practically shouting praises from the rooftops. Yasker, for his part, is vibrating out of his skin. Thank you, he exclaims, then his face sobers, and he makes a clear effort to get himself under control. He reaches out his hand for Vesemir to shake. It is an honor to meet you at last. Vesemir takes the hand, unsuspecting, and Yasker... Dice! Not iron, not enough to pull a human off his feet, and certainly not a witcher, but it sets Vesemir off balance enough that he takes a step forward and winds up with Yasker's arms wrapped around him. Is the world's shortest hug over before it really begins? Yasker moves away a heartbeat later, dropping Vesemir's hand with a soft smile. He looks past Vesemir's shoulder at Geralt. How's Roach? Not too crushed from all my extravagant belongings, is she? She's fine. But you owe her a good brushing. Geralt tries and fails not to watch Vesemir from the corner of his eye. His mentor has been stunned into silence. Geralt knows the feeling. He settles next to Esco by the fire as Yasker melts back into Lambert's arms. Hope for complete acceptance is unrealistic. It will take time for Vesemir to adjust to how much Yasker can be. But the longer they talk, 
And the more Vesemir watches, something like understanding makes its home in Vesemir's eyes. For now, that's more than enough. They eat dinner around the fire. It's a type of deer stew that Yaskir has never tried before, but clearly someone at Gilmorin is a master chef because it's delicious. Yaskir's money is on Vesemir. Geralt's mentor is not quite what Yaskir was expecting. He's tough and grizzled like the rest of the witchers, yes, but there's affection in his face that's plain enough to see. Vesemir cares for his students, cares that they're safe and well-fed. Yaskir likes him already. Around midnight, when the long day of hiking has caught up to them, Yasker and Geralt bid the others good night. Their room is upstairs. Simple, but spotless, and with a bed big enough to fit two, it looks like the perfect place to spend the winter. He and Geralt strip, they get in bed together, curled as close as they can get. Warm and secure, it is the safest they've both been in months. Yasker lies awake. He loves Geralt. Loves him with a fierce, burning passion that scares Yasker with its intensity sometimes, and he does not want anything to come between them. Knows nothing ever could, not if he has a say in it. And yet, it doesn't feel right to sleep beside Geralt alone when Lambert and Eskel are so close by. Yasker has grown close with them over the past year. He knows the ache in their eyes, and he has taken great joy in relieving the pain however he can. That ache isn't gone, he's sure. They crave as much as they always have, but here, in the one place where they should feel most comfortable, neither man is willing to ask for that which they do not think themselves worthy of having. They defer to Geralt. Their fear tastes like ashes in Yaskir's mouth. You are to sleep. Yaskir doesn't need to turn to know how intently Geralt is staring at him. Neither were you. Hmm. Yaskir thinks that will be the end of it, but Geralt's arm around him tightens and soft lips kiss behind his ear. There is a room on the first floor with a larger bed. He mutters. Large enough for four. Yaskir inhales sharply. Geralt, are you sure? I don't want you to feel like I'm choosing. That I could ever choose anyone but you because I love you so much you must know. Ah, no. I'm sure. Covers Russell as Yaskir spins around to look into Geralt's eyes. Their gold glows like embers in the darkness, lit by the dim light of the moon. I love you, he breathes. Geralt smiles at him, a tender open thing that makes Yaskir's insides melt. He brings their lips together in a lingering kiss before dropping his arms from Yaskir's waist and sitting up. Askel is the second door on the right. Lambert is third on the left. I'll meet you downstairs. Yasker rolls out of bed and shimmies on a pair of pants. He leans in for one more kiss before he slides out the door and heads for Eskel's room. It only takes one knock for Eskel to open the door still closed and looking as miserable as Yasker feels. This is horrible, Yasker says. Eskel can only nod. Yasker takes that as a scent, pulling him into a brief hug before moving away and grabbing one wrist to drag Eskel down the hall behind it. Lambert's door swings open before Yasker can knock. His arms are filled with pillows and blankets, the bed behind him empty. It is horrible, he agrees, and that settles it. They stumble downstairs, a mess of limbs and linens, and Eska leads them to a massive room where Geralt has stoked a fire to life. There is indeed a bed big enough for four, more a pallet than a proper mattress, but with all the blankets Geralt has piled on it, it should serve just fine. They can figure out something better tomorrow. Lambert's eyes flick to Geralt, uncertain. Are you? A tense moment passes as Geralt works down what Yasker is sure is shame. His discomfort is palpable, but not for the reason Lambert assumes. It's the conversation Geralt hates, not the action of sharing a bed. Finally, he grunts out, Yes. And that's enough for Yasker. He falls back onto the mound of pillows and covers. I, for one, I'm exhausted, he declares. He's still shirtless because it's comfortable, damn it, and he wishes one of them would get a fucking clue and cuddle up. The room is cold, even with the fire. Are you coming? Eskel, sweet, bald Eskel, moves first. He tosses his shirt into a corner, followed quickly by his pants, and he spoons up behind Yasker in nothing but his small clothes. The tension in the air snaps, dissolves, and melts away at Yasker's sigh. 
Lambert joins them, his head cushioned on Yaska's stomach, and Geralt falls into bed last, bracketing Yaska from above, one arm slung across Yaska's chest, the other in his hair. Yaska is overwhelmed in the best way. Every part of him is warm, lit up by the witches in his bed. Perhaps he should feel awkward, yet the only emotion in Yaska's chest is contentment. He's safe. He's held. He has an entire winter ahead of him to enjoy this, to soak up as much affection as he can and return it in kind. Yasker shuts his eyes and lets the gentle winds of sleep carry him away. <laughs>